Hello and welcome to the first edition of Mr. Doherty Tries to Teach Chemistry with Toys. Today we're using Connects to talk about hybridization and sigma and pi bonds. So this guy that I have built here is supposed to represent an sp2 hybridized carbon. So here's our carbon nucleus in the center. If it's sp2 hybridized, it's got three sp2 hybrid orbitals. And those are supposed to be at like 120 degrees away from each other. Close enough, imagine them as being 120 degrees. And if we're sp2 hybridized, that means we still have one normal p orbital left over. So these yellow pieces that I have going up and down here, those are supposed to represent that normal uh, p orbital that's going to have one electron in it. So here are two of our sp2 hybridized carbons. Let's use these two carbons to model what an ethene molecule would look like, C2H4. There's a double bond between the two carbons, and then each carbon is also bonded to two hydrogens. So to represent the sigma bond that's going to form between each of these carbons, I'm going to put this clip on here and show that there's going to be a bond of overlap between the sp2 orbitals on this carbon and the sp2 orbitals on this carbon, and it's a sigma bond because it's overlapping along the internuclear axis. In an ethene, each carbon also is bonded to two hydrogens. So the remaining sp2 orbitals are each bonded to a hydrogen. So I'm going to clip these on here to represent a hydrogen. Two for each of the carbons. So we have a sigma bond between the two carbons. Each of these hydrogens that I added on here, that's a sigma bond as well, an overlap between the s orbital and hydrogen and the hybridized sp2 orbital and the carbon. But an ethene is a double bond, so there's not just the sigma bond, there's also a pi bond. And the pi bond is going to form with our remaining non-hybridized p orbitals, and it's not going to be along the internuclear axis. We're going to have those p orbitals bonding like this, they bend over to reach each, reach each other, and the bonding is above and below the internuclear axis. So here's our model of ethene. We've got our sigma bond between the two carbons. There's two electrons spending time there. And then our pi bond with the non-hybridized p orbitals going above and below the internuclear axis. And there's two electrons spending their time within those orbitals. Next up, we're going to take a look at this one, which is representative of an sp hybridized carbon. So in our sp hybridized carbon, we have two sp orbitals that are linear, 180 degrees away from each other. So that's what those green pieces are representing. And then since we only hybridized one of the p orbitals, we have two regular p orbitals left over. So there's one that's going up and down, and there's one sticking out and to the back. If we have two of the sp hybridized carbons, we can try and represent ethyne or acetylene. So we're going to take these two carbons, and the first thing that will happen, we're going to form a sigma bond between the two carbons. So there's an sp from this carbon overlapping with an sp orbital from this carbon. That is going to be a sigma bond because the overlap is along the internuclear axis. I'm also going to put a hydrogen on the other sp orbital for each one of these because each carbon has a hydrogen attached to it. And so we have three sigma bonds so far, one between the two carbons and one between the sp orbital on each carbon and the s orbital of a hydrogen. There's a triple bond in ethyne and so that means that we need two pi bonds to form. Luckily, we sp hybridized, so we have our two uh, normal p orbitals left over, and those are going to form our two pi bonds. So the first one forms when these two p orbitals overlap above and below the internuclear axis, so there's one pi bond, and the second one forms as 
these two p orbitals overlap above and below the internuclear axis, so there is our second pi bond. So this is representative of an ethyne or acetylene, and we have a sigma bond between the two carbons, and then two pi bonds uh, above and below, and then one that's in front and to the back of our internuclear axis. Here is my model of a benzene ring. Benzene's formula is C6H6. Each of the carbons in benzene is sp2 hybridized. So as you can see, we've got three orbitals represented. Each of those green sticks represents an sp2 hybridized orbital. And then we have our traditional p orbital that we did not hybridize there as well. Our three sp2 hybridized orbitals should be at 120 degrees away. Uh, the connects don't allow us to do that perfectly, but they're doing pretty good still. Each of our carbons has two sigma bonds to other carbons. So with their sp2 hybrid orbitals, they form uh, overlap a sigma bond along the internuclear axis between the carbon on each side of it. And then there's another sp2 hybridized carbon uh, and each one of those is going to be bonded to a hydrogen. So I'm gonna go through and clip the rest of those on. I will uh, pause the video so that you don't have to watch me do that. Now we've got our benzene with each one of those carbons bonded to the two carbons next to it, as well as bonded to a hydrogen. There's also in a benzene, if we were to draw the Lewis structure, gonna be double bonds between every other set of carbons and so we're going to try and represent those uh, pi bonds that are present in the double bonds by looking at the overlap between the traditional p orbitals that are here so there's our first one we're going to have overlap above and below the internuclear axis to form a pi bond between those two carbons i'm going to pause the video and do the rest of them so as you can see, now we have our benzene set up so that there is a double bond between every other set of carbons. That means that there are two electrons in each of those uh, pi bonds. So there's a total of six electrons in pi bonds here. When we draw benzene Lewis structure, we could draw it one of two ways. We could draw it with those pi bonds being in the locations that they are, or we could draw it with those pi bonds being between the other sets of carbons. And like we've discussed, if you're able to draw two resonance structures of something with uh, double or triple bonds moved around in different locations, then the real molecule is actually going to be uh, an average of those two molecules. So in reality, those electrons aren't spending their time like two having to be between these two carbons and two having to be between those two carbons in a pi bond. Those six carbons are actually spread out across all of the p orbitals within the whole benzene ring. So those electrons are called delocalized electrons because they're not between two atoms. They're actually spread out across the whole molecule. Here is a smaller model of a benzene ring that allows us to see the delocalized pi bonds a little bit better. Uh, I've left off the hydrogens on the carbons just for simplicity. But as we can see, we don't have three sets of localized electrons that are just between two carbons. We have uh, a visual showing all six of those valent electrons just being spread out or delocalized across all of the carbon atoms in the benzene ring. Some of my neighbors are staring at me through my patio window. Hello neighbors, just trying to do some virtual teaching. I'm not crazy, I promise.